I'm Jeff Apodaca. Eric Strauss. And welcome to this week's, uh, I guess, Meet Let's in the Middle. Let's Meet in the Middle. I'm and, excited uh, for this week's show. Well, wait a minute. Wait, what about the hat? Oh. What about the hat? You kind of dig the hat? You made fun of the hat the other day. So, But I want to tell you a little bit about why I'm wearing the hat today. Um, You're trying to either I got a new, I got a new ratings, hairstyle. kill our show. No, no, I got a new hairstyle. <laughs> so if you know we talk about my kids sometimes, you get upset that All we talk too much about the kids. Good. I'm very proud of Asher and Gage. Oh, Asher okay. made a bet with me. And I'm not I'm a man that, I'm, and I'm No, of course you are. Go. But I'm, I live up to my obligations. And my son, Asher, if you can see right here, he gave me 4,500 kisses. That was the 4,500 kiss, by the way. He had to give me 150 kisses. Man, look at that nice hair I had back then. Uh, he had to give me 150 kisses over well, 30 days. You came up with the, another and, uh, one of the And I told him, well, ideas. the kids wore their hair like this. Mm. So I basically said that I would... Um, I would shave my head if he did that, yes. never thinking he would do it, by the way. Knowing that you two made two fun of me in the past for my short hair. You've well, literally and, made and there's, fun. And there's a little bit also, I'm going to put the hat back on. There's okay. a little bit also because this week. Yeah, please this, put the hat No, but this week on. is my 40th anniversary of surviving cancer. <laughs> this Friday, the 18th, they told me 40 years ago I had cancer. And the there white you hat, are. The white there hat, you are. That's me in high school. A lot younger. And, a lot, and 40 years ago. was a state lot champions, more in style. Santa Fe High State Champions, though. Yes. But I used to wear this hat when I went through cancer, so I kind of wearing a hat this week in remembrance of 40 years and actually supporting cancer survivors. That so anybody, hat, anybody out there listening, yes, I'm just telling you, and thoughts and don't give for up. Everybody Absolutely, cancer, but don't give up because I, make I was fun blessed. Of you, but then well, you I, make fun of me about it. anything. Yes. But I was blessed because 40 years ago, um, I don't know, that's a good look though. 40 years ago, I went, I went through look. cancer, and so I'm wearing the hat this week. Please keep tuning um, into the show, though. Please. And watch my hair grow every week, by the way. <laughs> so what's going on in your world? Uh, you could actually put that hat on Hunter Biden, and then we'll never have to see it again. Because he's nowhere to be found. So Would he you? actually, Would you? Hunter Biden actually resigned from his Chinese board. I saw that. I saw that. I wonder if the Biden family lives this privileged lifestyle. Hmm, let me think. Answer yes. Well, I well, there's there's no proof right now that there's anything oh he's done. There's gosh. no proof right now that he's that, that so he's done. Uh, he's this no, big no, but, qualified but, but, no. gas Look, guy. To, you know, chances the, are the Ukraine boy. And the let's real be very let's, is then the pivot, like I said, let's the investigate it. The let's investigate it. They investigate don't want the Bidens. Investigate, investigate, investigate Trump. Trump. Investigate but, Trump, but, and I'm okay. I'm they, nobody cares the about the Bidens. I disagree. There's they don't people, care. They have said that, and I think they don't care. I think through the investigation, we're not for I Trump. Think through the investigation, would, would anybody have appointed a finger at Hunter Biden? Just like this is the whole thing. It, it's, it was just like the, the the stupidity of the birth certificate. Like you're president of the United States, show your birth certificate. Like why is it a big game he that people have to ask for? Well, after Trump. Okay, calls him on. out. But we go on. through hold months on. of hold secrecy. On. How many and president? How many presidential get? candidates you know show their birth certificate? I, I bet you they, when a, they applied, they had it. I never had to. Uh, you were not president. No, but of the you have United to. States, you have to be a resident of the state of New Mexico. You just had. A, you yeah, had but a, you weren't. You just had a proof presidency. For it's president. the same thing, though. That's what I'm saying. Is and today's show, we're going to be talking about political it's, divides. Yes. And that's the whole point of today's show because absolutely. Um, because everybody, everybody just attacked. Well, and everybody's just attacking everybody. And we laugh about it because we have divides sometimes, but we always kind of come together. Yes, we, um, we have. And I think that's, I think, well, not that big of a divide. I know. But I think that's the, that's the key is I think we have the debate tomorrow night, or this week, I guess. Yes. Um, and the, the divide between the parties, the divide between each, each, each. Um, and each, and it, but my big deal is it takes the spotlight off of real issues that we all can agree on. And when we when we start setting ourselves in these little camps, I think it's very dangerous. Well, and we've talked about it. I, I've said this before. If Trump would literally just tweet about the the, the economy, just shut up, well, just basically. shut up and, t and tweet about the economy and about how we destroyed ISIS, right? He'd probably have a 60 percent approval rating. But bottom line is, he's one of the drivers of this nitpicky politics stuff that's going on in our in our country today. I don't today. think he's a driver. When you get elected and people basically just say anti-Trump, never Trump, right, right off. But the hold top. on, but, but they did that for Obama look, too. Oh, no, they did not. Oh, no, absolutely, came. they did. Absolutely, are they you did. The serious? Republicans came after Obama and the said, minute he got wait, in office. Hang on. We said, are not going to. They uh, went we on record and said. I'm anti-Obama. Absolutely, oh, and they really? said there are Republicans uh, in the House and the Senate of that of anti -Trump, basically never said Trump. that. Because he got it from both sides, okay, anti-Trumpers hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. and never-Trumpers. We, we okay. got to go to a commercial. But we got a legend coming up. Yes, we have Sam Donaldson here. Uh, we're I'm gonna excited. Be, we're going to be talking about political divides, and I thought it'd be great to have, we both thought it'd be great to have yeah. Sam on. He's retired, lives in New Mexico, yep. and so we're really honest. Uh, we're uh, 
excited to have him on. So we'll be back after this. But don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook Live, and we'll be ta uh, talking to Sam Donaldson soon. In a time of a divided America, two people from different points of view sit down to talk about the problems, to talk about ideas, to talk about life, and to find common ground. It is now time for Let's Meet in the Middle with your hosts, Eric Strauss and Jeff Apodaca. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Jeff Apodaca, Eric Strauss, and a news legend. I'm well, let and you, you know, take this one well, away. Well, thank Apple. you very much. We're excited to have a dear friend of ours. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, and actually, Sam Donaldson joins us today. Sam, thank you for being here. Just a little bit of bio with Sam. He was actually born in El Paso, Texas. No. You didn't, you didn't realize. I know. But, it's true. But you, grew up, but you grew up in Chambrino, New Mexico, right? <laughs> yes. My mother uh, uh, got up uh, one morning. She was a widow woman. My father had done what he could do to get me started, and he had a final heart attack, and that was it. And wow. she said, I'm, she lived, of course, in New Mexico in the farm. And she said, I'm going to have this one, because I had an older brother, in the hospital. Right. And she thought the nearest hospital was in El Paso. Actually, I ran the route many years ago. The nearest hospital was in Las Cruces. I still love my mother, even though she made a dramatic so actually, mistake. You actually, the only reason you were born in El Paso was for that reason. Right. But also, you know, That's Sam funny. started a 52, 53-year yeah. career in broadcasting. Um, but 47 years at ABC, where you were uh, also White House uh, correspondent, chief White House correspondent. And I think as a kid growing up, that's how I got to know yeah. you, covering from, I mean, I guess really remember from really, uh, I guess, Nixon times. Um, and today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And that's why we appreciate you coming on, because we really, part of the show we talk about is trying to bring people together and, yeah. and come together. And, uh, and I think nine times out of ten, we really do that at the end of the show. But today... So maybe that, eight times out of ten. Yeah, ten times. <laughs> but we started talking last week about how we want to talk about political divides and how our parties mm. are divided. Yeah. And we just thought, instead of having a bunch of guests on, we really appreciate you coming on. Because yeah. with your experience, both at Washington and the years, uh, we really want to talk about politics and how different they've become throughout the years. So, well, and just look, like Ellen DeGeneres goes and watches a football game with uh, W, the Bush, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she gets crucified by her liberal friends, and you're like, wait a second, we can't enjoy each other's company anymore if we disagree? Well, even Sam, you know, like that, it's gotten that bad. But a couple of weeks ago, Sam, when that, my, actually Sam was at that dinner where Ed, Ed Lujan and my mom were honored, I posted that. And literally, there were some Democrats that made negative comments to my mom because she posed with a picture with a Republican, and they were both Lifetime Achievement Awards. So I think that the, the thing that we really want to get into is yeah. what do you see, um, you know, from, from the early days to now, both at a national level and a local level, the political divide? What do you see in the, across the board? Well, I see a big problem that's sort of twofold in the country. Almost half the country wants to go back and keep this country the way it was when their grandfathers came out here and got this prairie going, and the values we all knew, and most people, frankly, were white, except uh, you know, uh, black Americans, but they were suppressed to the extent that we didn't look at them the way we need to and should today, as citizens just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So half the country wants to go back to old values and a country that, in this world, really can't exist. Well, it just doesn't exist. Because, because we have eight billion people in the world, and guess what? 11.1 percent of them look like us mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's suicide to think that we can wall ourselves off from them the other half of the country and i'm not saying at the moment who's right that's up to you know, people to decide for themselves the other half of the country says well, all right it's a big world we're part of it we got to swim in it uh people who come they've made this you know when the catholics tried to come there was a strain of americans that wanted to keep them out everybody who's tried to come and then of course one of them the Catholics got to be president, and the integration continues, but, and then we should continue it, says that half. We shouldn't say, we can keep these people out or send these people back or what have you. And so this is a, you say meet in the middle. Many of these questions at the moment are ones in which both sides say there is no middle. Mm. My well, way I or think, the highway. I think that's one of the mm. things that, so let me ask you, because we see that divide. And that's what we're trying to do with the show is bring people together do you think in our country, in the state of New Mexico now that you live in, do you think that divide, that divide continues, do you think we're ever going to come back and, and start working together again? Oh, I think we are. I think we have to. I can make that prediction confidently because if I'm wrong, it wouldn't matter. 
Right. We, our country dissolves. Mm -hmm. You know, meet in the middle. I'm surprised a little bit about what you said about your mom and, and when she pictured with Ed Lujan uh, and some Democrats uh, criticized her for it. Because I've told people back east, New Mexico, my native state, and I've come back now for about six years, we kind of get along. Oh, yeah, we shoot each other once in a while and, and we you know, have disputes, but Anglos, Hispanics, and of course Native Americans need to be brought in more to what I call this great trifecta. Uh, call it a cloth coat of many colors or whatever you will. We are the country, and we're where the country's going. Now, of course, that's not where some people want this country to go. But uh, I think in the long run, they may re-examine their views. Well, you know, I, so you, you, this, is, this is my big thing. A and what I get frustrated on, because I'm more on the right side, so I'm more in the conservative kind of, uh, you know, fiscal conservancy and... My well, big, you were the traditional Republican. Correct. Right? So basically, <laughs> Let's have and, it back. and and the the well, I'm not go back. But here's my big rub, is as we move forward, there's no measuring stick on their side of the fence saying we're here because while I know we have our uh, we, we've slid back a bit in our country. We've come so far historically from the foundation of this country to where black people are now, to where uh, Hispanic people are now. We had a black president, and it felt like it just pushed us further back into the 60s. Well, so my big rub is there's never been a sign or a measuring stick to say, if we are seeking equality or we're moving forward as a country, what does it look like when we get there? And this is my biggest well, pushback and, and, and just tearing down the borders. I never hear any well, kind of, uh, Eric, you what, know what, what do you think it, what would you like to see it look like when we get there? Well, I, that, I'm saying we're there. We're moving forward well, I, as a country. But again, I think we had a black president. We had, and this no, is but where, I, again, I think but it this goes is back, where I get a, the, but the, again, I think it goes back to economic opportunities and opportunities for all, right? And I think that's what we're talking about. And some of the stuff, Sam, you had talked about earlier, the divide in Washington has kind of always been there. Right, and it's yes. got and it and it's gotten worse. Yeah. but it was never in New Mexico. Is it, well, all right, you know it's, more it's about It's never New been in New Mexico, and now, and this is where Eric and I kind of agree. This new progressive movement has moved into New Mexico, has taken over a lot of the political party leadership, and is it is now attacking some of our values, some of the local New Mexico values, and I think that's where the divide's coming. Not as much as. Politics, well, white versus Hispanic. You've got it's to more define of like, for me what you mean when you say the new progressive movement. What progressive movement? I mean, so, there are some, but tell me what you mean. Well, I think if you look at Santa Fe, if you look at northern New Mexico, if you look at some of the, the ways some of the progressives have come in, they've moved in, they've taken over some of the party uh, elements of it, and they're basically saying, we know a better way of life. You guys have kept well, us what in I, What I'm trying to get at, yeah. uh, because I think it's a very important part of the discussion, mm -hmm. what do we mean when we talk about progressive or conservative? Mm -hmm. For instance, LGBTQ, is that, is that the progressive movement that some people feel is not New Mexico and uh, they resist it? All right, then we can have a discussion about that. So what does progressive mean? Uh, of course, liberals so, used to call themselves liberals until the uh, Republicans were successful in demonizing right. the word, and so they adopted the word progressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just seems to me that when I came to Washington, yes, there was partisanship, absolutely. Mm -hmm. they, they, they argued fiercely on the Senate floor. I'd covered early on the Senate and the House of Representatives. But at the end of the day, they didn't meet exactly at the middle. The dominant party in those days in Congress, it was the Democrat, they got a little bit more than the middle, but they left enough so the Republicans got something right. yeah. and could go home with $15 bus fare in their pocket, even though the <laughs> Democrats left on the jet plane. Uh, that today is not possible. That today is not what's happening. Neither side wants to say, well, I, I can win, uh, and you let me win, but I'm going to let you live. I'm going to let you come back and decide mm -hmm. whether you can do it better. Uh, I mean, my uh, favorite example, and I'm, I know I'm filibuster, just the... No, the, no, it's okay. No. A while back when the uh, Democrats controlled Congress before President Trump and in, back in the era of President Obama, mm -hmm. they came up with the idea for a new protection agency, consumer protection agency. Right. Republicans opposed it, thinking we didn't need it to this, that, and the other, whatever the reasons. I give them principled reasons, if they will. Democrats had the votes. They enacted the law. But in the law, it said that the chairman of this new commission, this new agency, must be confirmed by the Senate. 
And when the Republicans seized power, they wouldn't confirm a chairman to make certain that the agency, which was enacted by law with the majority vote, could actually work. Could actually now, that's the kind of politics on both sides that is driving this country down in the mud. Well, yeah, and, and so and when, it's quid pro quo. Well, it's, hold on, but when, when, when did you, when did, is but Sam, from, from covering Washington for so many years, when did you see that turn? When did you, when did you kind of see that turn? Was it a, a presidential election? It was the Vietnam War. So that's when you kind of started seeing that turn. And at that time, we were just fat, dumb, and happy. We'd helped win the war. In right. fact, we had a lion's share of the victory. We were the dominant power. We were the big dog in the world. Soviets got nuclear weapons. That was dangerous. But other than that, they didn't count. And we used our influence basically to help other people, including rebuilding our former enemies. Oh, absolutely. We thought we were good people. We thought we were doing the right thing, and we're so proud of ourselves. And then, bang, right into the big muddy of Vietnam. And we came out of that wondering just who we were and what we had been doing. Mm, that's and I think point. we have been affected by that in many ways ever since. Uh, because it was it was almost like the perfect storm, mm -hmm. you know, because you had this, the, the Vietnam War, and then you had this kind of new hippie type of movement. I wasn't there. Free I, I, wasn't there. <laughs> I was 10, by the way. I didn't so. cover that. <laughs> but, but I think at the same time, it, then, then you, you love also... Love in the mud. I don't well, know how that goes. <laughs> by the way, you also, had, you also had Saudi Arabia and stuff like that yeah. controlling the oil oh, yeah, in okay. the country. Because mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember OPEC as a kid... I remember waiting in lines at 10, 11 years of age for gas in Oh, New I Mexico remember the gas lines. Because we had, we had uh, gas shortages. For, for Jimmy Carter's administration. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, and, there, and so, uh, again, that put us into deficits, right, uh, that our country had never seen before besides that, besides that wartime. Well, it was a war. Remember, yeah. Lyndon Johnson, first of all, in my view, he was the best civil rights president we've had since Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. barring none. Right. Yeah, he had voted for ev against every civil rights bill when he was in the Congress, including bills against lynching. He wanted against them because he knew he couldn't be reelected in Texas without it. Mm. Once he got to be president, the real Lyndon Johnson came out. And we had the act which did away with the jury segregation. We had the Voting Rights Act. He was on the way. And then here came the war. And all the money had to go to the war. war. And his own reputation to be able to get anything done was damaged severely. Hey, hey, LBJ. How many kids did you kill today? I remember that. His yeah. daughter yeah. remembers yeah. hearing that oh, yeah. when she was in her bedroom at the I White House. I want to talk about some more well, let, presidential let's go back. stuff we, when we come Yeah, back. we got to go to commercial break, but we'll be right back right after this. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook Live and Indigo Mortgage and Ryan Sonvac. Thank you for our sponsors today. We'll be back right after this commercial. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum is New Mexico's number one brother dealer. Brother's new Luminaire has a built-in projection system which helps with quilting, embroidering, and sewing. Ryan's has a variety of machines to satisfy quilters, sewers, embroiders, and long armors. We offer the finest vacuums like Mila, Ricard, and Lindhouse. Check out our fantastic selection of fabrics and sewing furniture. We also offer classes, repair, and financing. Drop by our store in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum, serving New Mexico for 37 years. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Joining us, really, I, I'm going to call you a legend because I, well, he I've, is. Always been, I've always been a fan. And uh, this Sam is Donaldson and, and Sam, from ABC News. The, the word legend is one word away from the word calcify. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, Sam, this will probably, this will probably be the, the, the show with the least, more, least arguing Eric and I do. Well, it's, I mean, no, it's fascinating because we want to talk to Sam about yeah. historical don't have any time. Too. I'm going to dominate the time. That's when okay. That's started. what you're here so for. So what's though. dominating the news right now is Syria. the Syria right now and then Trump. The impeachment, right. The impeachment. You've been through this rodeo before. I and I wanted to get some of your insights with it seemed like Lyndon Johnson didn't know what to do with Vietnam. Right? Yeah, he didn't. I mean, do he, you think Trump knew he was knows caught? What, yeah. Uh, he didn't know how to get out of mm -hmm. it. He was aware. This man was not a stupid man. He was aware of what was happening to the country and to him, but yeah. he didn't know what to do so about let, it. Well, yeah. then, uh, on that point, let's go into Syria, what's going on yep. right now, and, 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 the, and the Turks invading. So now Ron Paul has come out, I saw over the weekend news, 
that, and he's the only one that I've heard say this, that while well, Trump knows what he's doing, he pulled our 50 troops out because Turkey was coming in. And that's always my thought is like, I can't imagine we just basically got off the phone with Turkey and said, okay, we're moving our guys, take over. Well, and, but you're only talking but, but, about a thousand soldiers. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's not but, like we, everybody thinks but, we dude, have this giant militia over there. Well, no, and they and, only move, you know, and they only yeah, move 50. The yeah. thousand soldiers with the trip wire. With the trip yeah, wire. Turkey, exactly. there you, you go. dare you mess with our on. thousand soldiers, so, you don't know what's going to yeah. happen to you. It's called 50 megatons. Yeah. And yeah. so Turkey, Erdogan even, who aspires to be a dictator and is to some extent, although he suffered an elected view shortly uh, back, uh, he, he didn't dare move. But when we decide to pull it out, and the president has been very honest about it, he's followed his gut. Mm -hmm. He followed his gut. His advisors, as certainly, certainly the State Department advisors, asked him, begged him not to do it. Right. But his gut was, and his promise in his, in his election campaign was, I'm going to withdraw from the world, withdraw from Afghanistan, withdraw from there, withdraw from here. We, we are America, and we're going to surround ourselves and with I, a moat. And I think we also understand that sometimes, whether we like it or not, our military, we have to be places to protect our interests, to protect I think our so. partnerships. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> um, I mean, for the, for, for, and again, Eric, this is where you and I may disagree, for us, to, for us to work with the Kurds, and I know the Kurds have not been allies of ours for a long, long time, but for us to work with the Kurds, and look, we've said this before, if Trump just talked about and text about, I've destroyed ISIS, which we all would agree he's done an, an, an unbelievable, our military's done an unbelievable job eliminating yeah. a lot of ISIS right now, but what's going on right now is literally we could free up 1,100 ISIS criminals that now want to attack but, us. But according to the news reports, we have. Right. We have. There's at least well, 300 that have well, already escaped. They, the 300 that escaped were the women and children that were being held in detainment so far. So but, far. But, but so far. But, but let's be clear on this. Here, here's the real issue is... At what point, if, if you are up, and if you look at Trump, even the Times, I think, had come out and said, like him or not, he's following through with his promises on the campaign Oh, trail. absolutely. No, no, and, I, and he's so trying to. He's, he's trying, trying to. to. Absolutely. And so I, I think a lot of times, I think, and Mr. Donaldson said it the best. Call is, me Sam. Uh, for, <laughs> so, so for Sam <laughs> said it best, I think sometimes he just follows his gut. And something about, I don't know whether, and I had talked to one of our production managers before we came on, I don't know if there's something backdoor we don't know about with Russia or something with Turkey, but what is making him pull out now, I have no idea. Well, well to he, be honest with you, when we pulled out, I just assumed that Turkey's not going to invade, but Turkey's going to... No, Turkey. Part, well, no, no, there's no, no, no but, tripwire. There's no tripwire, right. And I just they assumed... see that the president... But, but, but he wants well, to withdraw. Right. When so we we're going to take advantage of yeah. it. When we announced we were going to withdraw, I assumed there was some kind of inside deal for the first time between the Kurds and the Turks, and that they were going to get together no. and kind of work together. And next thing you know, no, within I, 24 hours, I they're never bombing. That. They're I bombing. Thought. That's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't make political or strategic sense, Sam. I mean, it just doesn't. Well, if or, it doesn't make missing? political or strategic sense, why then would well, he do it? Exactly. If you if you were covering this White House. Would you be? <laughs> well, he said earlier he wanted to go back. Yeah. Would, would you cover this White House? Would you do something different if, than if, what's going if on If I were right somewhat now? younger than 85, yes. Yes, I would do it. I think they're doing as good a job of reporters as they can. But I dealt as a White House correspondent with three presidents and mm -hmm. other presidents I interviewed, even though I wasn't the White House correspondent. And uh, some of my questions, I think, they found very uncomfortable. They didn't want to answer them. And they didn't answer. They dodged, they weaved. But no one said, you're rude. I think you should be fired by your network. You're the enemy of the people, yada, 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 yada. Well, I don't know how I would have handled that. I hope I would have handled it professionally. Mm -hmm. They're the president of the United States, and I'm not. So I'm not going to start getting in an angry uh, match with them. But what do you think that does to, to people, who, even reporters? One of, the things yeah. I want, one of the things I want to cover in this segment with Sam is we had talked about it because you have seen, and you and I have talked privately about this, you have literally covered at least six or seven speakers of the House. Yes. And Nancy Pelosi, whether you like her or not, very polarizing, both within the, her own party and outside the party. Well, her own party's polarized. Well, that's, oh, okay. yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying is, is like, she's looking, being drawn look, look, to the left right now. Let's be honest. I don't disagree. Okay. I don't disagree. I, I, liked her, I liked her plan. I did a little blog on my website but, saying, I'm for Nancy. We want an election next year. We don't need an impeachment investigation, which is basically if Republicans hold in the Senate, 
going nowhere, but right. taking time, energy, well, and fueling and both sides. But we, but we understand, but, but if you understand politics. But yeah. you know why? Yeah. But this last thing, this transcript, it's, I call it the smoking transcript. Right. Finally, we had a smoking tape from Nixon in which we yeah. heard him and his chief of staff cook up a felony, an obstruction of justice to cover up Watergate. Now the White House itself, this isn't the Democrats, transcript, put out a transcript of his phone call with President Zelensky of the Ukraine on the 25th of July, in which he says, hey, do, do us a favor. When Zelensky says, I'd like to buy some more. Some more and bomb. the favor is in, ultimately investigate corruption and particularly the Bidens. Now, if you can do that, now, now let, come no, on. Let's, let's, talk, Pelosi, let's talk about so the impeachment. Eric, a, this is where Eric and I, dis, uh, Eric and I have, see, have had conversations about yeah. this that we don't agree I think on. it's a big nothing burger. And by the okay, way, personally. and by the way, yeah. I think we all would agree all right. that 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 in, in the stage it is right now, the House is probably going to impeach him. The Senate will not follow through. Right now, but right Eric now. is right. Eric, you're right. I mean, it's a nothing burger. Uh, okay, the last poll that, of course, there, has upset the president is the Fox poll, the Fox which poll. says 51% now. That's just barely over half, and yeah. that's not nearly enough no. to convict. 51, but it's a rising number. I saw the same thing happen. Nixon won re-election with a huge with landslide. landslide in the 1972. Landslide. Yeah. By the time we got to the summer of 1974, his support had gone away, and yet I want to remind you of this. But, uh, but on the day on. he left the office, one step ahead of the sheriff, with his incontrovertible evidence yeah. that he had committed right. what would have been a felony had he gone to a criminal court, 24% of Americans still say, I approve of him. I think he's a great president. Now, We've always had a strain of minority in this country. In that case, we'll see what happens now. They're going to follow their hero. I don't care what he does. I don't care what he says. I don't care what you say he did. It's a conspiracy. We love him. Now, I agree. Yeah, and I, it was the same thing with Obama. I it can was promise the same you. There was demagoguery with that guy. Well, they loved I, it. I, okay, but I let's would have callers on my radio show. I'd say, name one thing. Obama has done wrong, and this is. Uh, See, I can think this of is, several things. This I think is he did six wrong. years the in. The red line in Syria. Yeah. We talk about Syria. Okay, was the one pink of the line. Yeah. Ones. Okay. So anyway, you know? so I would say name one thing, and you know what they would say? He didn't. He didn't uh, uh, go after Bush, and I'm like, what? <laughs> really? But, but let's go back to. The, I want to stay back on on the impeachment. So Sam, you covered Watergate. Both of them. You covered yeah. Watergate. Uh, you covered the Clinton. The Clinton thing. Now again, I think no one historically would disagree that you know the, the main crime in Watergate was the cover-up and the president led that cover-up and so that had to happen. Um, Clinton, well, whether moment. you believe it or not. You say it had to happen. In those days, yes, clearly, even though 24% of the public, the balance of the public said if he hadn't resigned, yeah. he would have been convicted, right. convicted and impeached. in the Senate by a mm -hmm. wide by margin, margin. two-thirds would have been Absolutely. more than that. Yeah. And the same thing is brewing here if the balance of the country moves in that direction. Mm -hmm. At the moment, Mitch McConnell and the boys are safe. Mitch is in kind of, for him, an unusual position of fairly close. Not really close, but fairly close. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. And I mean, no disparagement of him or anyone else. If he sees next year, at this time, They'll see throw the throw oh, absolutely. They'll throw Donald uh, J. Uh, Trump over. Because okay, so he's not a Republican. A he's, he's already in a tie race in Kentucky. Are we actually saying that a president who releases the transcript, are we equating that to the Watergate tapes? Is that as hard no, of oh, evidence? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Yeah. First of all, the White House has been very clear. These are from notes. We haven't actually heard. They have a recording. And the Ukrainians have a recording. Uh -huh. mm. we, we haven't heard the it's exact the words notes, back and right. forth, but what they've released is to a lot of people, it's clear he's, he's uh, put well, the and again, whole and thing, and, again, and I was like, well, this is the big impeachment scandal? But this is where you and I disagree. This is where you and I disagree. But there was nothing that. hard. There was no quid pro quo. You there was have, no you threatening. You say that, but there you was, have a president. But I heard you at the beginning, you and Jeff talking, and I was listening kind of carefully, and you were sort of, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were sort of equating whatever it is that's in that transcript with the Bidens. Mm -hmm. Now here's the President of the United States. Has he in fact, maybe not, but from the transcript there's a suspicion that he tried to put the arm on a foreign power to investigate his potential political opponent here. That's equated with the Bidens? 
And by the way, okay, but, we, but we've talked about it. No, no, but we've talked about issue, it. I'm okay gonna, investigating the Bidens, too, because if the Bidens did anything illegal or they wrong, they did stuff illegal and wrong. Wait, what, what was illegal? But they were just, the point, he was the point man for Ukraine. His son got a sweetheart deal to be on the board of a, a Ukrainian gas company and make $50 You mean like George W. Bush month. got to get in the National Guard? Right, exactly. right. Hey, exactly. Okay. And, he, and, and if so that we should was impeach if he, his father. But, but the, hold on. But, but that was, the whole thing was, he was the point person for Ukraine. They have Biden on tape saying, look, you fire this guy or you're not going to get aid. You mean the I prosecutor? Mean, it was straight, but hold on. Straight the prosecutor that fired. the French wanted fired, the Germans wanted fired, but and the new president using, wanted fired. But he was and still was using his political. But, but again, still, again, hold on. But Biden was. <laughs> I love Biden, this. But I, I'll Biden, get out of the way and let you do that. That's what I'm saying. Biden was saying that kind of stuff. And look, I, like I said, Let's investigate the Bidens, and if there's something illegal there. Oh, there but you have a sitting, you have a sitting president asking another foreign leader. And by the way, that sitting president, whether you like it or not, he represents every American in the United States. For him to sit there and do that now, am I saying it's well, impeachable? Hold, hold on, on, hold on. Let me finish. Okay. Is it? Is this? Am I saying it's but, impeachable? But I want to probably be, not. But like I say now, I what's going to be what's going to be the, the silver bullet is the cover up. Okay, so because based now, now on the sudden, transcript, they got, they got what he Giuliani. really was asking for was an investigation into the server. And that's a lot of people are misconstruing those things that, because that he's a Democratic well, Clinton server. So, yeah, so the server, but, he, the, 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 but ah. he's, he said server off the top. But bottom line, let's, let's go yeah, back. He did. Let's, let's go yeah. back. No, he did. he did. Let's go back. I, I read Do you the whole think, thing, Sam, trust good. me. You, you covered, yeah. you, I would like to see everybody in the country, of course that's impossible, read the whole <laughs> thing and then with, other, with their neighbors just like you two are doing, yeah. the three of us are arguing it. Yeah. Arguing well, it. and again, yeah. I, th I read it. Do I think it's impeachable? Nothing, Burger. Um, do I think it's impeachable? Probably not. Do I think it's going to go anywhere? Probably not. Now with the new things coming up with Giuliani and these two other Ukrainians that had one-way tickets. We're going to see his tax returns. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, that's returns. coming out. Even the Supreme so, Court again, cannot deny I the law. Think, I, I think an investigation needs to happen because now we need to figure out what's going on because if this is one, what are other things happening? And I'm okay investigating the Bidens too because he's okay. running for president but, and he was but, vice president. But, but hold on too. Um, and let's be honest. From the get-go, why? And let, let's why, let's why be, be honest why about be this. Why different than some of yeah. the people we know? <laughs> From the get-go, <laughs> have have the Democrats? extended any olive branch or has it been impeachment no, no, from the start i, I don't think, think the word has been impeachment has been used but you're right it's there from was the no start. Uh, there was no olive branch yeah you're exactly Absolutely. right uh when he when he chanted lock her up and if i were president i'd have her investigated and jailed yeah. where's the middle there that's what where's i'm saying, the olive branch? That's what I'm saying. You, you forget okay, about that but, you forget okay, about those agree things. with you there but <laughs> who on earth can open up their own government server in their house I work for a radio station, but I opened up my own server and did my business from there. I get fired for a rate. I mean, come on. By the way, let's think, be honest. Well, on, what she was doing was illegal. Can any well, of us? Minute, hold on, hold on. It wasn't oh, illegal. Wait, it was on. probably improper. It wasn't illegal. The FBI. The FBI and then you, get there was, to, you get to delete 30. Could you imagine if Trump I, I, deleted 30,000 emails? By the way, I'm not saying, it, over I'm not saying it's right or wrong. You guys have got to call that. I am not saying it's right or wrong, but it's not illegal. Come on. But it wasn't illegal. Yeah, oh. I think it was a very bad well, move. Well, wait a second. So, Eric gets to decide whether it's illegal, but no, from the standpoint of our so, system, but, only the Supreme Court gets to decide whether it's illegal, it's illegal. or well, not. But that Supreme Court, as no. with all the justices no. the appointed government by agencies, Obama, the FBI, which Mr. Uh, Trump has disparaged, the, 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 of course, the, the says Supreme it's not Court illegal. Until recently, has been split pretty much right down no, the middle. No, it hasn't. Yes. No. And so my point is, I think what Hillary Clinton did with those servers was completely wrong. It wasn't against the. It, it wasn't against the, the law, though. So we can start opening up our own government I, of business in our house, dude. She was no, a private citizen. No, hold on, she no, was a private I'm citizen. You, but and I'm, then I she don't was, see what your end point is in the sense that it was completely wrong. The FBI director, when he said we found nothing illegal, disparaged her and said it was a bad mistake and terrible and all that. Fine if he wants to do that, but 
But then After they that, came out Colin and they, Powell, but then they said Colin they came Powell, out with the Col Russian and said, Colin look, there's Powell, no collusion. Colin Powell, After that, Colin Powell, of collusion. Colin Powell, where's the end? Should she be in jail? Right. Should we have locked her up? Colin Powell had the same without situation. Due process, without due process, without the same no, situation. Without a trial, for sure. Use, use, oh, she Colin Powell, but, but you don't get to delete that. I want this brother to have a trial. Is, I do not want him locked up. Sam, we get to get without a trial. Does he get to hand By the way, we're going to have to go to commercial. We're going to have to go to commercial. We'll be back. This has been a fireworks show. <laughs> hey, we'll be back right after this. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum is New Mexico's number one brother dealer. Brother's new Luminaire has a built-in projection system which helps with quilting, embroidering, and sewing. Ryan's has a variety of machines to satisfy quilters, sewers, embroiders, and long armors. We offer the finest vacuums like Mila, Ricard, and Lindhouse. Check out our fantastic selection of fabrics and sewing furniture. We also offer classes, repair, and financing. Drop by our store in Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Ryan Sewing and Vacuum, serving New Mexico for 37 years. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. Uh, joining us is Sam Donaldson, are we ABC Sam, Sam, News. Sam and I are legend. banging up on Eric today. Yeah. I like this show, by the way. I'm going to bring in my own. Uh, yeah, come on. It should be two and two. This is this guy. I think, I think Eric was okay, like, look, Eric, you were afraid that we were going to gang up on you. Well, you are ganging up on me. But that's no, okay. we're not. We're just, okay. Okay, this, so look, okay hold on. But let's, this, rate this, let's rate this Trump impeachment scandal amongst the, the ones you've seen. Would you say this is a bigger deal than Watergate? No, but I'd say it, it's it's like Watergate. It's but like not Watergate. like Clinton. So you're giving it that kind of. I'm giving it Lewinsky. Lewinsky. You're talking Lewinsky. About, hold on, hold on. You're hold talking on. about. I, no, no. You're talking about. This no, no, no. I am. You're talking about a president, sitting president, to try and use influence to another Eric country. Eric didn't ask me to explain my answer, just give my give answer. Give me answer. Now, what and what doing? I'm saying is, is yeah. Nixon, <laughs> sitting president, using his influence to cover up for political right. gain. Both were doing political gains. Now, do I think Trump is going to get but, impeached? But we no. all remember that the Democrats hired a company. He's going to but is he but, going to be convicted? But, but yeah, we, all be remember, convicted. we all remember that the Democrats hired a company to put together a dossier, right? And the investigate Trump, dossier. the steel oh, dossier. God. But hold on, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then that was the real crux of Trump's Ukraine call is, hey, don't you have that, uh, dossier server in Ukraine, uh, right? Crux and this was- Do us a favor. Right. Do us a favor. Do well, us a favor. Do us a favor gets a guy- But those right. words- but, 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 what were the Democrats Joe Biden, doing with the, the way, dossier? If Biden, if Biden was that, like, if Biden was, had 2% in the polls, he'd be asking something else for somebody else. Yeah. It wouldn't be about Joe Biden. Yeah, he's, he's going after Joe Biden because he, knows, because, he okay. knows the polls show him losing to Biden. By, he's not going to lose to Biden. Oh, he will. No. Anyway, okay, hold on. If What's Biden it? can survive war. Guys, that's another broadcast. Okay, yeah. right, 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 right. So wait, there. I want to go back because you interrupted my question again, but that's okay. Um, I'm just so trying to stay on we're looking at script. Watergate. We're looking at wa the Watergate scandal, right? And, and so in terms of Watergate, Lewinsky, or Ukraine, how would you rank those three scandals? Uh, from the standpoint of the public's mm -hmm. reaction, yeah. of course, at the moment, Nixon is ahead. Okay. for ranking of importance. Okay. We haven't got to see how many Americans, at the end of the day, wherever that is, make a decision on the Trump business. We saw, even when that impeachment for Clinton went to the Senate, they didn't have the votes. They didn't have the votes. Mm -hmm. right. They never got 50 votes, let alone two-thirds, mm -hmm. because the public was convinced it was about sex, and which one of us, maybe with one exception, wants to have that closet opened. Right. <laughs> Now, actually, people who had looked at the law said it was about perjury. Yeah. He had perjured himself right. quite clearly. Now, how do I know that? Only because the experts say so. On the last day of Mr. Clinton's presidency, a man named Robert Ray, who had taken over from Judge Starr, Kenneth Starr, mm -hmm. the uh, office of uh, special counsel, demanded of the White House that either the president would acknowledge his perjury or the moment he was out of power, he would be taken to a civil court by grand jury and tried. So the, you'll find it, look, go on the internet, folks. On the last day of Mr. Clinton's presidency, they issued a piece of paper in his name in which he acknowledged, quote, that he gave uh, uh, false, test. false testimony under oath, right. which is a definition of perjury. Had that been the issue, and you asked me what's important, I think, Presidents shouldn't commit perjury. They lie a lot sometimes. We all do sometimes. But not, not I, of oath. course. I but not saying. under oath. Because that, the, really the oath is what 
It's important. It's one of our most sacred things. We can't have a fair and I trial. Think we all agree yeah. with that. If now, let, let, people uh, don't testify Sam, and know they have a yeah. problem a clear, if they don't tell the truth. Yeah. And Sam, there's a couple things. One thing I have been saying, and I'm, the Nixon thing is a whole different thing, but the Clinton impeachment and this impeachment, both, again, I think both did wrong. Are they impeachable? I don't know right now. But we both agree that the Republicans made it an issue and went after Clinton as the Democrats are making an issue and going after Trump. So these two impeachments, uh, at, least the, at least, oh, let me finish, at least the start, right, it's really political. It's for political well, game, there's a difference with, really with Nixon. Yes. Yeah, Nixon, that's was, what I'm saying. Nixon, the Nixon was a whole different thing. started after Nixon, basically, and the Republicans tried to defend him, right. but never with the zeal which said, postscript, he's my guy, and I don't care what he's done. Right. It's, we don't believe that he did these things. Right. We do not believe he's covering it up. Howard Baker, one of the most honorable people that I knew in the Senate at that time, was the Republican vice chairman of that committee that investigated him. Uh, and he helped, when he said, what did the president know, and when did he know it, he's trying to help Nixon, because he actually thought that Nixon hadn't didn't, didn't, to cover yeah, up. Right. When they found that he had, by listening to the tape, they all threw it in, obviously. Right. These people, but not his 24%. So I, do, I do think we're still, we're still, again, I think if the impeachment's going to go forward and it gets bad for Trump, it's going to be more of what is really Rudy Giuliani doing? What are those two Ukrainian guys? That's the silver bullet that we're going to have to investigate. But he has another in. problem. You talk about it, all of us should be objective, look at the evidence, and that's what we should use. Yeah. And Nixon had to some extent. He was still tricky dick to a lot of people. But that had been vetted in 1960. He did the honorable thing and threw it in, didn't try to contest the election, although John Kennedy won with 112,000 votes yeah, nationally. Right. But Mr. Trump comes to this with a history of p things that a lot of people don't like. Grab him by the what? Right. In other words, and let me just go through the, I won't. But if you think about it, he says and does things that unusual and a lot of people on that side of the divide will hold that against him unfortunately regardless of evidence or arguments mm -hmm. that you might make about this transcript and that mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. he has a problem there well let's I get what you're we saying. can talk about that we can talk about impeachment all day long but I want to talk about two things um, one you've covered many many different things yeah. one of the things Eric and I were talking about is is you know over your 52 years one of the greatest American achievements you've covered um, for our viewers. What, over your 50 years of covering, what is the one American achievement do you think our country has done that you covered that you're so proud about or that you could talk about? Well, I covered presidents and I covered politicians and you'd have to argue about this particular law or that law or what have you. But I think until recently, our great achievement was to be that shining city on the hill that Ronald Reagan wanted to talk about the city that everyone in the country, I mean the world, wanted to come to. I mean, they're coming to the United States not, not because they think, I want to rape people here, excuse me, but you remember the president oh, yeah. warned us about that. Yeah. Um, they're coming because they wanted a life that they see that we've been having, we've been living, and the opportunity has been here. And our achievement has been, and I hope we can keep it, to be that shining city. So, it's, it, and see, that's where I see a lot of times, and I, I actually was, uh, uh, guest speaker at a naturalization ceremony, so I spoke hey, that's to. A, at, that's an honor. It was a very big honor. I one of my one of my better moments, um, and I, I wrote an entire speech similar to what you're saying. But what I'm seeing now is, and I I, I interviewed a lot of the ranchers that are living on the border, mm -hmm. and it's people coming across, and they're more indignant. They're more not wanting to be as Americans as much as they're just trying to get away from their life. And this is from boots on the ground. Guys, I've been talking to you, they're demanding cell phones, they're demanding stuff immediately when they hit the border because they're, they're well in tune to the game. And so I, I, I'm just wondering, you know, and, and I love the fact that you have that shining kind of, you still feel like people are coming here for the right reasons, but are they, I, I, and I gotta be honest with you, I don't think 
They're coming here to be Americans as much as they're coming here. When you see the Venezuelans come in, they're not holding American flags going, I can't wait to be American. Well, they're coming here. They're, because they're coming because they're fleeing and they're coming yes. because they are seeking yes. safety. Yes. They're not really yes. wanting to be. Oh, I don't think they've read our Constitution. Uh, I don't America, think they've been yeah. civics right? classes. Right. They're coming because they see maybe an opportunity for a job or they're fleeing oppression mm -hmm. for one reason, mm -hmm. poverty, what have you. No, you're correct. They, they're not listening to speeches from the two of us mm -hmm. uh, at that point. And of course, if they are not the kind of people that we want to integrate into our society, and we're not talking about the color of their skin or their religion right, right, or anything right, else, right. but just are I'm they just willing to work hard? Are they willing to, to, uh, to now learn what America well, is again, about? We go back to, we talked about this before, we had a whole show on immigration, but... The, the, and the ranchers, the, I don't blame them. I have a small ranch, but it's not on the border. If I'm on the border and they're coming across my fence, uh, butchering my life, I, mean, I am going to be terribly angry, mm -hmm. and I'm going to vote for someone who's going to keep them out. Yeah. You no, know, and I think a lot. I think a lot I'm of not ranchers. Thinking about the big picture, I'm thinking yeah. about my home, my family, and my safety. Right, right, right. And I think a lot of the ranchers. We've talked to them. They want a wall. They want some type of security. Sure. But where Eric and I we've talked about is look, Eric. A lot of the reason that's going on down in Central America and South America is because some of the foreign policies we put together, we've now let those those socialist yeah. countries basically the alliance for hold, progress is yeah, hold, no longer, exit, longer there. there. So it's hold people down. So they're escaping that and they're coming here. And I just go back to we need workers, we need work visas, we need those type of programs. There's no reason that we can't. When I was integrate growing up those. at a cotton farm in southern New Mexico, we had the Bracero program. Mm -hmm. People from Mexico came across under permit to make money. We paid them, <laughs> and then they went back, they home went back home with the money for their yeah. family. And you know that I grew up in Las Cruces, the farming community down right. in Las Cruces. But, we used a but lot. But can of that. we can we all kind of open our eyes too to the fact that look if I can go pick cotton in a field or strawberries or and, and make That's New Jersey. five, five, <laughs> six bucks, whatever. Okay, right. right. Or I can smuggle drugs across the border and make thousands oh. and thousands of dollars. They take, they take the drug route. Right. But my so point, who you uses the drug? We use the drug. You always we, say that. No, but you well, no, always but, say but that. We have to have at least our eyes open. Yeah, no, I don't no, disagree. No. Not everybody's that. just coming here no, for no, a good no. job. No, I understand uh, that. Had, but you have to understand that 90% of the people, I'm even throwing it's probably higher than that, they're coming your, over. You your believe, numbers are skewed. He, your you, numbers believe, are skewed. you believe that 90% of the people are coming over running drugs. No, I don't know. It's just not true. I do not believe that. I think it's more 50-50. What do we do about the drug problem? Since we okay. use the drugs, and as long as we Correct. use them and right. pay for them, they're going to find a way to First, do it. <laughs> agreed. And that's why... Do we legalize favor, drugs? No, I, I'm not a big legalization fan. And I'm not always, either, but just, what do we got to do? We just did a whole show on that. But <laughs> it's not, it's I, think the border, I think the border fence... Some type of physical barrier but is the, essential. They fly over. They come in, in speedboats. Yeah, but <laughs> the, the, the drug it all comes but, with the well, detection. My, point is, right? my it, point is, the drug dealers will always find a way. So we have to stop drug usage before we stop drug dealers. Which is a whole different. Right, that's, that's what I'm saying. I so, mean, that's, but yeah, what I'm saying is, the people at, that are coming over that we've talked well, about. Well, New Mexico. Now we go back to New Mexico. And now we go right. back to New Mexico ought to be ought to be higher than 49th in states in drug centers, abuse centers, and all of that. We right. put a little money in it, folks. A little right. money. No, I don't want my taxes raised. How dare you? Oh, Sam, thanks. we have about two minutes to go before we <laughs> okay. end, because this we has been great. We didn't get to the point of, I, I want to get back to, okay, okay well, the greatest thing you got to do as a journalist covering the White House. Like, what was that moment where you looked and said, I love this job, or I hate the job? Well, the, the most dramatic moment was when I watched Ronald Reagan and three other people got shot <laughs> Five feet away from me, John well, Hickory Jr. Oh yes, yes. Now that was not the great moment. Thank right. God. Yeah, I know. Well, of course, Jim Brady so badly, the press secretary injured, he's right. deceased now. Delahanty, the the cop, shot, and McCarthy, the Secret Service guy, took a bullet for his president. And Reagan, we thought, was not hit, but he was. That was. I've, I watched a lot of people in the White House do things that are in the history books. Jimmy Carter, much poo-pooed by people. If he hadn't put together, and he did it, Sadat and Begin, Israel and Egypt, the first peace treaty between those two powerful nations, they would have had another couple of general wars since. Right. Uh, he eventually got the Nobel Prize, but not at the moment. Now the Nobel Committee has been on record saying we should have given it to him then. But after all, he was a little Baptist from Georgia. From Georgia. <laughs> You think that's really what prevented <laughs> I th it? I thought there was something more than just an evaluation. 
because they were right to give it to Begin and Sadat, but Jimmy Carter was the handmaiden, if I may use that term. Without him, they wouldn't have done it. Well, I got to tell you right now, uh, we could go on. <laughs> yeah, we could go we'll on. We'll have you back again. We're going to have to have Sam. Hello. On. This is why we only invited Sam today because we. And knew. I want my usual fee. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But anyway, but Sam, thank you so You'll much for it. joining <laughs> us today. And, uh, oh, thank we, you. we appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. We appreciate you. it. I appreciate it. Yeah, but we'll be back right after this. I'm Ben Lucero, president and owner of Indigo Mortgage. We are a locally owned and operated mortgage company right here in New Mexico. This means your loan officers and processors are right here to serve you. Indigo Mortgage offers better rates and terms than that of big banks and out-of-state lenders. Our mortgage divisions include residential, commercial, construction, reverse mortgages, and VA mortgage loans. Let us serve you with an exemplary level of care. Indigo Mortgage, because nobody cares more about your mortgage loan. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle, a feisty show. You know, I, 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 I need to start bringing sandbags with me well, at you know, some first point of all, because I, I, I think I, it's, this is probably uh, the it's show pretty talk, much me against the world. This is probably, well, that's not true, but this is me. This is, this is probably the, the least talked I've done in, the, in, the, in any of our shows, and I'm worn out how myself. Lucky, how lucky were we but to no, get you know what, that? I think that was what, a great get because you're friends with Sam. We're, we're friends with Sam. And, and, that, I'm very, um, and I'm very blessed that Sam yeah. and Sandy helped on the campaign. Sam did a lot yeah. of my voiceovers. Um, and you know, and Sam's been friends with my parents, and we got down and got to have lunch when he first moved back, and we just got to know each other. And he is, that's what we were talking about off the air. He has seen the ins Everything. and the outs, both at a local and a national yeah. level. I was so appreciative that he supported me very yeah. publicly. I was the first candidate he ever well, endorsed. And see, he, hit, he fits our vibe perfectly because him and I can totally well, disagree on something. And at the end of the, the show, he shakes my hand and says, he, again, th back. he goes back. Are those days over, though? Well, and I he, mean, and, we're, and he we're thinks, like the unicorn. Well, and he thinks we're all going to come back to that because it can't continue going this way. So, yeah. but I think that's He's one of the things we want to. He's more optimistic than I am. I think. And I think I'm like him. I think I think we do think it's going to swing back. And look, and we talked do a little you bit really off the air. Think we that? think we talked a little bit off the air about the progressive movement here in New Mexico, and some of it he was not against. Some of it he kind of said. I, 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 I felt like he, um, and, and when we bring him back, because we need to have him on again. I felt like he doesn't understand as much how far the left has swung because of his optimistic viewpoint. Well, I think like he still I, believes in this America and and talking, and he doesn't realize that that Antifa is pushing far left, and we've got the far right kooks. Well, and, I think he's. I think so, he's. And, and I think he's polarization. But I is, think he sees that. But again, I think he goes back to when I sit when I sit and have either a glass of wine or lunch with Sam, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's enlightening because it, it's also talking to history. It's, it's yeah, a know. historian, right? And that's what so makes, what I try to, makes that, me hopeful. That's why when he sits there and says, I don't think, you know, when, you, when we talk about let's rank these impeachments, I think we all agree. Chances are this isn't the next Watergate, right? That's what we yeah. all talked about. This isn't the next Watergate, but he made a good point. That right now, it's public sentiment. It's public sentiment. That's what really drives. That's going to drive it. Yeah. So he says, you know, a lot of people at, at the beginning of Watergate thought it wasn't that big of a deal. As public sentiment grew, and that's why Nancy Pelosi's now jumping on the bandwagon a little bit. Now, my philosophy is, whether it costs a dollar or costs a, a billion dollars, we have to investigate and keep these politicians in check. Because if we didn't do that, right, then where could it, where could it be? And chances are, see, that's chances where you are, and I, I, chances I think are, this is going to be a waste of time and money. It's a political well, move. I think she got on, yanked by the left in hold her on. party. They spent eighty million dollars. Yeah. Star spent eighty million dollars investigating Clinton's affair with an intern. Waste of money. Waste of money. Waste of but money. That's what I'm saying. But is, again, here's they the other. Check. And then we're coming off of the Russian collusion. Waste of money. Waste of money. What, what was proven? But again, they had again, to. But what, we all what, hold on, hold on. But we all agree. But hold on, we all agree that the Russians. Everybody agrees that the Russians tried to interfere. Uh, not everybody. Now, by the way, by the way, I, I, I believe. I believe. Let Russians, me. Can I finish, please? Yeah, go ahead. I believe the Russians interfered. Did the Russians? How? Did, they did. It's so dumb. Historically, I mean. Okay. okay hold on. Can because, I finish, please? Okay. Let me finish my thought. <laughs> well, because you've been interrupted. I'm not interrupting you. Fans, this is you. this is this is why it's hard uh, to talk to the guy. Okay, anyway, go ahead. no, but the, everybody agrees the Russians tried to interfere. Now, did the Russians have an influence on the election? No. I don't believe so either. I truly don't. I because, don't think. And I've asked this question by the way, time I tell and it, again. But again. I don't think so. Did a Russian but did internet advertisement suddenly make you go from voting for Hillary to voting for Trump? Absolutely Probably not. Nonsense. Not. Probably not. Nonsense. But my, but my point is, Nonsense. we had to investigate to see what was going on. And then Trump and Nonsense. his people did have meetings with the Russians. 
That was proven. Did anything the, illegal the happen? Democrats no. Democrats had meetings with the Russians. I agree. They were That's compiling we have to and so trying again, to get after going Trump back to, from the okay, get-go. Let's, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. So one of the things I want to talk about, and I hope we can put it on the, on the screen later, but Elizabeth Warren. Uh, you know, I, I, I have Liar a hard time. Liar and a kook. Well, I have let's a hard time. Honest. I have a hard time Liar supplying. And a kook. But she's been telling a story about when she, she got fired because she was pregnant in 1971. Pocahontas. Um, and again, I have the bigger issue that she's sitting there that she's Native American and it comes out 1 16th. And so um, obviously there's controversy now. She's now the front runner. So even the Democrats are jumping on board. But it's kind of like going back now. Well, there's now she wasn't there's, fired. There's now documents that she wasn't really fired, that she kind of they quit. They unanimously voted to extend her contract from the school board. And then she quit. So again, I think it goes back Nobody to Nobody fired gaining, her because she now, was pregnant. She's Let's now be gaining, honest. I, probably agree with she's you. working she's working it. right because so it's again, they tell these stories and we talked about on the campaign right they tell these cute little just stories like hillary of, coming in under helicopter fire remember that whole right, right, right. fiasco to make everything more but i think emotional. it's i think it's interesting that that now democrats and republicans um are jumping on the jumping against her on these stories and i've always kind of said i don't know about the pregnancy Can thing we at least when say she she's basically a liar for sure i don't disagree with that okay. she's definitely fibbing about that story and Biden with his, anyways, let's not go there right now. But another story that I know yes. we talked about that you'd be very proud of is the Washington Post, which, by the Washington way, you, you always say fake I news. Said, I said New York Times, by the way. No, but you said Washington Post But I misquoted fake news. that earlier in the but, show. But, but, it's Washington Post. The Washington Post, fake news. And they actually did an opinion poll, an opinion article. Trump could be the most honest president in modern history, but I think it's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but you know what the, the story is? If you read the story, which I agree with the story, Trump is doing everything he, he said, said he was, was going to do. do. Yep. So what I'm saying is, is, like, is, we're pulling out of Syria. I don't think it's the right move, but he said he was going to do that. Well, now he's leveling. This was breaking, by the way. He's he's uh, uh, starting sanctions yeah, against Turkey. Yeah, we just during the show, we got that. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's he is he is imposing sanctions on Turkey now, and Turkey better get their act together, pull the plug a bit, let's pull the reins. Don't just look at it as, as Mr. Donaldson said, as a the the trip cord. How do you, what was his analogy? Uh, do you remember? The trip cord the was trip removed. Cord, yeah, yeah. So um, again, let's, I, they I, need to calmer heads need to prevail. Well, and again, I get the Kurds and the Turks uh, have fought forever, yeah. and they're fighting over, and they're they're actually invading this little territory that yeah. they think is themselves. My concern is this is where we put all the ISIS guys, yeah. right? And so whatever's going to happen, hey Turks. Let's go in and protect and make sure those ISIS don't yeah. get out. Don't get out because let's make it very, very clear: the Kurds and the Turks are not allies of the United States. No. They're allies of the UN, which we always agree to help. So um, those are kind of things. But, um, but so just, uh, I, impeachment to be continued. Uh, I want to thank Sam Donaldson, our sponsors, Ryan Soenbach, uh Indigo Mortgage. Without them, support them. If you do mention, let's meet in the middle at Ryan Soham back, you get extra discounts. And then, hey, every week we're on the air, but don't forget we talk about, yep. uh, we, we're on Facebook Live. Facebook we Live. Try, we didn't get to a lot of Facebook Live stuff today because it was so yeah. engaging mm -hmm. with Sam. But, yep. uh, but I think, um, again, I think uh, a great show, a great topic that we got to continue. But yep. we'll be back right after this to wrap up the show. Find us on Facebook at Let's Meet in the Middle, or you can email us at meetinthemiddlenm at gmail.com. Welcome back to Let's Meet in the Middle. It's been a rambunctious show to say the least. We've covered a litany of topics. Well, and we knew we would with Sam, and I hope I hope the audience yeah. liked the show this week. Um, and again, you know, well, the whole goal was to tap into the 52 years, and I think we did a we just barely scraped. Well, the you know, surface. and I wanted, I, you know, when we started talking last week, we started talking about this week's show, and it was about the political divides that we wanted mm -hmm. to do. And we had other guests that we were thinking about bringing in, yeah. but then when I brought up, you know, when you sit and talk with Sam. Uh, it's historical. Very engaging. And when too. we talk about, you know, we always talk about the debate. Uh, we always talk about the uh, the uh, the the um, impeachment thing. You know, Sam has covered all three impeachments. Yep. There's not many people in America that here in Albuquerque or New Mexico we can sit and talk to. Yeah. That can give it, a, and and that's what I really and want dare to talk I to him say about. Must watch TV because some of his insights. If I'm having my aha moments when he's on. I hope our, our well, audience is out there, too. Well, and I think too. the strongest point that we didn't make during the show that he made was when I asked him, when did you think the turning point came in the U.S.? And he said the Vietnam, Vietnam War. And, and it I, made a lot of sense It made a lot of me. sense. And I think that is, when you yeah. look at it, 
That's when deficit spending started happening. That's when the divide yeah. started coming up um, yeah. between all our between our countries. So yeah, and that's um, where brother and sisters started to disagree. Right. And and I guess the you have to look back. Probably, started probably going. since the Civil War is probably yeah. something that has come with that. But yeah. Anyway, so um, but Sam, we want to thank you so much yep. for coming on this week, and and it's been a, a great uh, great topics. Absolutely. That we, talked about. we could have talked to him all right. month. But hey, New Mexico, join us every week, and we'll be back next week. Hey, one thing. Never give up and always find a way. Go out and make a difference. In God the bless world. you guys. God bless.